Hello and welcome friends. In this particular presentation, we will be discussing about the use of minor equipment in land surveying. As you learn the content, you will be able to recognize the appropriateness of minor equipment for measurements in land surveying as well as to explain the construction of the minor equipment and also to demonstrate the use of minor equipment to take the measurements. Essentially, these minor equipment are very useful in the reconnaissance and the preliminary surveys. As you know, Reconnaissance and preliminary survey is the basic step of surveying after which we will be going for the various phases of the surveying may be related with the detailed survey, may be related with the execution work, check surveys and such things. At the reconnaissance we wish to have the preliminary idea of the extent to be surveyed and at that time it is not feasible to carry all the heavy equipment as such. Just as we are interested in knowing the features related with the topography on which we wish to survey, we would prefer this particular minor equipment and the range could be hand level, abne level, Indian pattern clinometer, silon car tracer, d listless clinometer, sextant, proportional compass, pantograph, etc. As we move ahead, we will have the idea clear, but all the equipment are useful even at the various phases of the work. Say for example, Proportional compass and pantograph or pantograph is useful during the drawing or office phase of the work. However, as we try to have the reconnaissance and the preliminary surveys, the equipment could be used to choose the alternate routes for the various alignments, to look at the various points of the given grids to measure the slopes, to trace the grid contours, to find the height of the objects, to measure horizontal as well as the vertical angle, to calculate the area of the irregular map, to enlarge or reduce the size of the map, to locate the contours on the ground and to take the cross sections. As far as use of this particular minor equipment is concerned, it is quite restricted in case of modern surveying such as say for example aerial surveys or essentially all the surveys which are involving digital instrumentation. However, the way I mentioned initially one can make use of such equipment to quite a benefit during the recognizance of all the kind of surveys. The first equipment we wish to discuss is nothing but the hand lever. It consists of a rectangular or circular tube which could be 10 to 15 centimeter long and equipped with some level tube at its top. The line of sight is parallel to the axis of bubble tube and it is defined by a line joining the pin hole at the eyepiece 8 whereas certain cross reference provided at the objective 8. In order to view the bubble at the instant, the object is sighted and a small opening 
immediately the bubble immediately below the bubble is provided inside the tube so here the way you see here in this particular cross section the bubble tube is mounted on the top of this particular telescope just below this particular bubble tube there is small opening below it half the way covering the total cross section is provided mirror at 45 degrees so when observer looks through the eyepiece when observer looks through the eyepiece he will be able to sight the object of his interest through half of the cross section whereas he will be able to compare the position of the bubble with the reference so the way you see here in the lower figure when the bubble lies on that particular cross reference here the line of sight will be horizontal in order to use this particular equipment one can make use of certain graduated rod it could also be staff so as we take the reading corresponding to that particular graduations one will be able to calculate the reader reduced levels the way we do in conventional leveling operations other equipment is abne level it is nothing but the improved version of the hand level as it is essentially the telescope provided with the eyepiece as well as the object glass and even the spirit level here as far as this particular spirit level is concerned the main distinction is the spirit level is not in the static horizontal position the way it was provided in case of hand level it is also provided with a graduated arc which forms the main scale 0 to 90 degrees on either side of the index here this particular vernier arm is pivoted at the center of the main scale and it can be slid along this particular circular arc in order to take the readings once the arc is set at the specific degree it will cause the spirit level to move in conjunction with it in order to measure the vertical angle it is essential to keep the equipment at the eye level and to direct its objective till the line of sight bisects that particular object since the line of sight is inclined the bubble will go out of center the equipment is provided with this particular mirror screw so this particular mirror screw is used in order to bring the bubble of this particular level tube at the center here what you see is nothing but the graduations this is vernier arm provided with the vernier scale this is the main scale which is provided with the graduation 0 to 90 degrees on either side in order to measure angle of elevations as well as of depression here this particular index part is coinciding with the zero of the main scale and the bubble is horizontal hence this particular position is indicating the line of sight to be horizontal even this particular equipment is provided with the graduations indicating the slope on the inner side of this particular circular arc so the way you see here 
the index is indicating 45 degrees whereas the upper edge of this particular index arc or one year arc is indicating the slope of 1 is to 1. Similarly, as this particular arc moves on the other side, the right edge will be referring to the graduations showing the slope according to the angle of elevations or angle of depressions. So to set out the gradient, initially the arc should be set at the required angle or gradient and the line of sight should be established. Here the operator using the abnormal level sights through this particular eyepiece and instructs the assistant who is standing at the other end of the line holding the target rod in which direction he has to move either on the left or right or to up or down. So as the correct position is occupied which is related with passing of that particular line of sight through the target mark that is through the cross mark that is provided with the target. This will be giving the correct position and the gradient will be set to that particular requisite order. In order to measure the gradient, the sight is taken on a point which should be at the same height above the ground as the eye of the observer. In this case, the line of sight will be parallel to the ground surface between this A and B. Holding the abnormal level in this position, that is the crosshair intersecting the target, the bubble will be brought at the center of its run by turning the mill head. The angle of the line of sight with the horizontal is read on the arc which is nothing but the required gradient. Next equipment is Indian pattern or tangential clearometer. Usually this particular equipment is preferred for its usage during the plane table surface. It consists of base plate carrying a longitudinal bubble tube and a leveling screw. This facilitates the horizontality of this particular base plate, hence the axis of bubble tube. There are two arms. One is I frame set perpendicular to this particular axis of bubble tube and another is nothing but the object fan which is also set perpendicular to this particular axis of bubble tube. This I frame carries a peep hole and the line which is joining this peep hole and the vertical hair provided at the center of this particular window will be forming a line of sight. The object pen is provided with graduations in degrees on the left hand side whereas the right side right hand side graduations indicate the respective tangents of that particular angles. This particular window is also equipped with a sliding frame which is in turn provided with the mill headed screw through rack and pinion arrangement. So here in this particular figure 
on the left side what you see is nothing but the angles in degrees this is zero mark for angles of elevation the upper graduations are to be referred whereas these lower graduations are to be referred for angle of depression on the right side what you see is that the tangents this is the sliding frame provided with the cross hair for the reference this is object one i pin level tube mid headed screw the best split whenever the equipment is not in the usage the object van and the i pin can be folded on this particular best split so in order to measure this particular vertical angles or the elevations let's how this particular best split set at the top of the table erect both i wing as well as object wing then turn this mid headed screw so that the frame will be slid in the requisite direction let the line of sight which is passing through this particular peep hole and the horizontal reference hair or wire provided to that particular frame and its continuation bisect the object as the object is bisected the horizontal hair can be referred and that horizontal hair if read with the reference to the left side graduations it will be giving the angle whereas if one is interested in determination of the slope one can refer to the right side graduations also as we have this particular line of sight horizontal we can have the elevation of that particular peep hole measured with respect to the ground as such we can define that ehi having known this particular ehi and the vertical angle referred to that particular object under consideration as well as distance measured in between the station instrument station and the object under consideration we can determine the v, v that is nothing but the d tan theta where the theta is the vertical angle as such ehi plus or minus v tan v that is nothing but the d tan theta will give us the elevation of the object under consideration next equipment is ceylon ghat tracer this equipment is very useful in order to set out the gradients especially for linear structures like road it essentially consists of long circular tube having the peep hole at one end and the cross wire on the other end which is serving as object van the line of sight is defined by the line joining the peep hole to the intersection of the cross wires and its continuation the tube is supported by a frame having provision to attach it to certain circular to a cer to certain stand so that it would be freely suspended and accordingly the necessary operations can be done this particular tube is also engraved to give the gradients which are shown on this particular circumference of that particular circular tube here a heavy weight slides along this particular tube through a rack and pinion arrangement the weight at its top contain one bevel edge which slides along this particular graduations of the bar 
and serves as an index. For elevated gradients, the weight requires to be moved towards the observer's end. So, in order to measure the slope, it is necessary to erect the equipment at the given station and to have the target set at the extreme station with the same height as that of observer's height. As observer looks through this particular eyepiece and moves this particular sliding bit till the line of sight passes through this cross mark provided on the target, the reading against that beveled edge of the weight will be giving the gradient of that particular line. In a similar manner, the equipment can also be used in order to set out the gradients. Initially, the beveled edge of that weight needs to be set reading the requisite slope. The equipment is to be held vertically with its stand at the initial station. The observer will look through the eye wing and he will direct his assistant to raise the target in such a manner that line of sight will be passing through the cross mark of that particular target. As this is done, the server or the operator can instruct his assistant to fix the ranging rod, giving the level of that particular target, indicating the requisite gradient. Next equipment is D-listless clinometer. It is used for measuring vertical angles as well as determining the slope of the ground as well as setting out the gradient. It consists of a gimbal which is nothing but the circular ring at the bottom of which a diagonally placed is the frame which has a mirror extending for half of its portion. Here the vertical edge of this particular mirror provides the reference. At the end there is a heavy semicircular arc which is fitted to this diagonally placed frame through the swivel joint. This arc is graduated in gradients showing the readings 1 in 5 to 1 in 50. This arc is attached to the vertical axis to allow its rotation about its vertical axis towards the observer or away from the observer in order to measure rising or falling gradients. The arc is also provided with the radial arm fitted at its center. The arm consists of the beveled edge which acts as index. By moving this particular arm along the arc, the mirror can be inclined with respect to the vertical direction. The inclination of the horizontal line with respect to that particular mirror position is the measure of the inclination to be recorded on this particular arc. This particular figure is indicating the various positions of the clinometer. The way you see 
here the arc is away from the observer its weight is counterbalanced by the index arm or radial arm this radial arm as you see it is equipped with a sliding weight which has got inner stop as well as outer stop when this particular weight is slid at its outer stop and when clamped by making use of the screw this particular position gives the vertical axis as such it gives the horizontal line of sight this particular figure is indicating the observer's view in the third figure the arc is rotated in the backward direction and this particular position is helpful to measure the falling gradients whereas when the arc is moved towards the observer this particular position is helpful to measure the rising gradient in order to measure the gradient it is necessary to slide the weight to the inner stop of the arm the way i mentioned earlier the arc should be turned forward for the rising gradient and the backward for falling gradients then suspend the instrument from the thumb suspend the equipment from the thumb and hold it at the arm length in such a position that observer will be able to see his eye on the mirror that is covering half of the diagonal frame then move the radial arm till the object is sighted till the object is sighted through the remaining half of the frame the moment this object coincides with the image of the eye of the observer clamp that particular radial arm by making use of the screw at this particular instant the operator can note the reading on the arm against the bevel edge of that particular arm the reading obtained will be in the form of gradient which can be converted into the degrees if so required for better results a vane or the target of height equal to the height of the observer must be placed at the observer's end of the sight the way we discussed in case of the cylon gutters next equipment is sextant in fact it is category of the equipment this kind of the equipment could be in the form of nautical sextant it could be in the form of box sextant it could be in the form of sounding sextant essentially this particular equipment is called as sextant because its graduated arc provides the graduations for 1/6 of the circle however the speciality of the equipment is though the arc is limited to 60 degrees the equipment will be able to view the readings up to twice of this particular graduation that is 120 degrees all the sextants are based on the simple optical principle which tells when incident ray reflects through this 
two wheelers successively. The angle in between the first ray and the last reflected ray is twice the angle in between the two reflecting mirrors. As such, the way you see here, there are two reflecting mirrors set at inclination of theta with respect to each other and the angle in between the incident ray, first incident ray and the last reflected ray is twice of the angle in between the plates. Use of nautical sextant or use of sounding sextant is more related with the hydrographic survey. The equipment is quite bigger as compared to this particular box sextant. Also, it is provided with some other pigments such as filters, color glasses in order to facilitate the better readings. Even the list count of the equipment is high. It has the provision to have the readings in the rocking boat. The next discussion will be just having for the equipment box extent because it is the equipment very helpful as far as recreations is concerned. The box extent in its most compact form is a reflecting instrument capable of measuring the angles up to 120 degrees. Here, the way we consider the smallest division on the men's scale, 30 minutes, and number of divisions on the one year scale are also 30. As such, here it has got a list count of one minute. This is one of the most precise hand equ equipment as far as horizontal or other angle measurement is concerned. This particular equipment is used for measuring the horizontal as well as the vertical angles, measuring the chain angles as well as locating inaccessible points. Also, by setting the vernier to 90 degrees, it can be used for offsetting or if one is interested to have the oblique offsets measured, even the vernier arm can be set to measure 45 degrees and can be used during the chain surveys in order to have the oblique offsets. The way we mentioned earlier, the theory of the sextant is based upon the optical principle that if a ray of the light undergoes two successive reflections in the same plane by two plane mirrors, the angle between the first and the last direction of the ray is twice the angle between the reflecting mirrors. This particular figure is depicting the various graduations. Here what you see is nothing but the men's scale provided with the graduations. The vernier which is attached at the end of this particular vernier arm is giving this kind of the graduations. In order to have that particular graduations read, we make use of such kind of magnifying glass. Here, this particular index arm can be moved through this particular control screw and this is indicating the position of the index arm at the center of the arc. This equipment is in two parts. This particular upper part is screwed in this lower holder. Whenever the equipment is not in use, it can be unscrewed and simply this holder becomes the box to accommodate the equipment. Here this AB is graduated arc, AK is adjusting key, this E is eye hole where the telescope can also be fixed in order to take certain longer sides. On the right side, what you see is H, which is horizon class. This horizon class is provided in 
two parts. The lower portion of it is transparent, so to say it is not silvered, whereas upper half is silvered. One of the two objects can be seen directly through the unsilvered portion, whereas the upper half receives the image from the index glass which is rotating in nature and fully silvered which is reflecting the image of the reference object. The index arm is connected to this particular index glass. So the way the index glass moves accordingly the index arm also moves. We wish to maintain the certain relationship in between this particular index class as well as horizon class and in order to maintain that particular relationship there are certain keyholes for making the necessary adjustments. This is magnifying class the way we saw on the earlier slide. The S is the index screw to rotate the index class. If we wish to have the readings corresponding to certain bright objects, we can make use of sunglasses that are provided in between the horizon class and index class. Here, this V stands for the vernier at the end of index R. The sextant is based on certain optical principle which is depicted through this particular schematic diagram. As you know, index arm is pivoted at the center of the arc. The pivoted end is provided with the index glass whereas other end is provided with the vernier which moves along the graduated arc. Plane of the half silvered horizon glass is parallel to the radius through zero of the graduated arc. When index arm is set at zero, index glass is parallel to horizon glass. Angle between the two glasses is half the angle between the sighted objects. To get the direct angle, the scale is such graduated that half degree reads to one degree. Here, this can be easily seen through this particular set of triangles. As you see in triangle ABC, here the exterior angle 2 alpha equals 2 beta plus delta. As such, this delta can be expressed as 2 times of difference of alpha and beta. Whereas in this particular triangle ABD, the exterior angle 90 plus alpha will be equal to 90 degrees plus beta plus this gamma. As such, this alpha will be having the value alpha minus beta. Here means this delta is nothing but 2 times gamma. So this kind of the construction, the way you see through this particular figure is helpful to get the angles directly as twice of the angle which is prevailing in between two mirrors. 
So, in order to have the use, already you have got acquainted with the various construction aspects. So, you know about the graduated arm, index arm or vernier arm, the vernier position, the observer's location as such. Here, the ray from this particular signal M passes through the transparent portion of this particular horizon glass and reaches to the observer's eye. Whereas, the light ray from this particular signal L strikes this particular index R. It reflects over it. It reaches the silver portion of the horizon glass. Subsequently, it again reflects and it reaches the observer's eye. The image which is directly seen for M and the image received through the reflection of the ray with respect to L should coincide each with each other. In order to make it coincide, the control screw is to be rotated so that here the image directly seen as M and the image received through the reflection as L would be coinciding over this particular horizon class. So this gives the angle theta. In fact, the vertex of this particular angle to be measured does not lie exactly at this particular eye position. In reality, it lies somewhat distance behind the observer's eye. Especially, whenever the angle is less than 15 degrees, the error could be substantial. Already we have gone through these particular steps for better understanding. You can once again go through this particular matter. Let's have the advantages of this particular box system. The equipment is portable. It requires no support other than the hand. As such, it is very handy equipment. The equipment can be used to measure the angle in any plane. That is, one can measure the angle in the horizontal plane. It can be used to measure the vertical angle. It can also be used in order to measure the angles in the skew planes, which is not possible with any other angle measuring equipment. As compared to compass, the equipment is very beneficial because it has got better accuracy. The way we discussed it is handy. As well, even it is very sturdy. And the one more advantage is it does not have any part which is influenced because of the local attraction. As such, it is not magnetically influenced. During the dry, drawing phase, we can make use of this particular equipment which is called as proportional compass. The way you see here, it consists of the two arms which could be of brass or steel with certain sharp point at its both the ends. Both these particular arms are held through this particular milled headed screw and the arms can be slid with respect to each other. Here, this particular arm is provided with graduations on both the faces. On one face, the left side gives the ratios for linear matches. On the right side, you get the graduations for circular measures. 
on the other face one can have the ratio related with the plants that is areas and other side gives ratios of solids as such in order to enlarge or reduce linear dimension circle plan as well even the solids one can make use of this particular equipment initially to use the equipment hold the legs one upon the other loosen this particular milled headed screw move the slider until the index line coincides exactly with the division mark with the number representing the given ratio for linear dimension circle plan or value say if the ratio chosen is 3 on the scale of the lines as such the screw is tightened and legs are pulled apart the distance between the point at the longer end will be exactly thrice that between the points at the shorter ends for enlarging the plan this equipment will be helpful to measure the distance from the plan with the points at the short end as well as to transfer them on the new sheet with the points at the longer end and vice versa in order to have the enlargements as well as reductions of the entities the way we are interested in another old equipment is pantograph this equipment is used for reproducing enlarging as well as reducing a plan the equipment is based on the principle of symmetrical triangles when the instrument is correctly set the dressing point the pencil point and the fulcrum will be in one line the way you see here the equipment consists of four arms two longer and two shorter the two longer arms ab and ac are hinged together at end a and two shorter arms d and tf are hinged together at d and also attached to longer arms at e as well as f the four arms are so arranged so as to form the parallelogram a e d f a having all sides equal the instrument is supported on several small rollers in order to keep it in stable position as well the rollers help to have the sliding of the various sides the arms ac and df are graduated and marked with the various ratios such as 1/2 1/3 1/4 on its top so as to facilitate the enlargement as well as reduction and even the reproduction these are also provided with these purpose sliding frames which can be clamped at any of the divisions on that particular arms the frame on the 
longer arm is attached to this particular weight W which is called as fulcrum. This fulcrum keeps the entire assembly of the equipment in stable position. Here this forms the center of the equipment which facilitates the tracing of the figure around that particular fulcrum. The other long arm AB carries a tracing point at B which is moved over the lines of the original plan while the pencil fitted to the pencil point to the pencil point produces the new plan. Here as shown in figure this particular point is moved through this particular B B dash whereas its movement as traced by tracing point is reduced as P P dash. If one is interested in having the enlargements, the pencil point and the tracing point can be interchanged. With a change in time, the pantograph like equipment is obsolete and not in further use. So, well friends, thank you for your attention. I hope the content that we have discussed will be helpful for you to facilitate the basic objectives of our learning. In the coming presentation, we will discuss about use of theodolite for land surveying. So till then, bye. Wish you very happy learning. Thank you.